So how can we tell whether something is true? What was the very, very first thing we looked at under the heading of calculus? The very first thing we looked at was... We, to, to differentiate, we need to go to first principles, right? Make me a little subheading. Now, first principles isn't a very uh, fun, quick process usually, but it's useful because when you don't know what else to do, it's your foundation. It's what everything else is built on, okay? So what I want you to write with me is, what is the definition of first principles when we use it for differentiating? What does it start with? Starts with that thing we never want to keep on writing because it's so repetitive. Starts with a limit. Right? I'll come back to why that limit is there in a second. And then there's a fraction, right? Do you remember what the fraction had on it? f of x plus h. And then there was a difference with minus f of x. Now what was this? This was the, this was the rise, right? So we're doing rise over run here. What was the run? h. So what we're doing here in first principles, cast your mind all the way back like a whole year now, we're thinking about rise over run as the run gets really, really teeny tiny, right? Because we're interested in tangents, not, not secants, right? So we actually don't want the two points to be apart. We want them to be right together, okay? So this is how first principles looks, okay? And we actually can use this just fine with this. But for this particular proof, I actually want to show you a different version of first principles. There's actually a, a whole bunch. If you've looked in your textbook, and some of you asked me this question before, um, I'll actually show you another version of first principles. Am I going to give the right one? C? No, it should be. Oh, yeah, no, I'll leave it that. I'll leave it as that. I'm going to write the first principles of the gradient function, but in a slightly different way. I'm going to think about, rather than this uh, run getting smaller and smaller and smaller, I want to think about two values that just approach each other. That's really the same thing, okay? If you write it like that, then this is what you will find. Your textbook has uh, a proof that uses this result, and I've shown a small number of you. Um, you don't really need it. This is the one that will do all the work for you. But I want you to see why it works. Underneath each of these, let's draw just a really simple diagram, okay? What does this one look like? If you were to draw a function, Where are x and h and x plus h, where are they going to be? Well, we pick some value, x, and then we go forward this little distance, h, like this far. Right? So if that is, x, if that is h, rather, where's x plus h in this diagram? It's this coordinate over here, right? Because you're at x plus h. Okay, where's f of x plus h now? What does it correspond to? Remember where it is, it's on the numerator. What was the numerator of this function again? What does it stand for? It's, it's rise and that's run, yeah? So here's your f of x plus h and you're subtracting f of x down here. And there's your rise, okay? What would the diagram look like for this one? Draw it with me. We're gonna have the same kind of picture but all our labels are gonna be slightly different. You still start at some point, x, wherever you like, right? But the place we're gonna go, ooh, I've done it backwards, sorry, is going to be somewhere else that's not far away, but I wanna compare the difference between these. So that's why it's x minus c. You see how that's the run now? Maybe I'll write that for you. Run. Is that okay? Do you see it? So now where's f of x and f of c? Where did they come into this diagram? Where did they come in over here? They're about the rise, yeah? So here's f of x. There's f of c. Can you see the rise now? Can you see how that corresponds to the numerator? Rise. Okay. Now the reason why I highlight this is to show you that the same thing the same thing doesn't have to have the same letters or exactly the same structure, okay? But it's still doing the same thing. It's still a limit. It's still got rise over run. 
And there's a particular version of this that just makes this super easy to fall out. Okay? The proof of this one is in your textbook, but it's about three times longer than the one that I'm going to show you. So that's why I'm going to give you this slightly different version. Okay? I'm going to draw one more diagram down here. Mm -hmm. It's going to look really strange for a second. It's going to look needlessly complicated. But I want you to think in your mind as we go through this why it's actually going to make something really nice and dramatically simpler. You know how we usually start at an X and then we like go left or we go right, like a little distance or H or whatever. For this one, I'm actually going to go both directions. I'm going to go H units that way to the left and I'm going to go H units this way to the right. Think with me. Not a trick question. What's the right hand coordinate going to be? You recognize this one already. It's x plus h because you went to the right. What about the other one? x minus because you're going the opposite direction. No big deal. Okay. So what's my run going to be? Look carefully. I went h that way and h that way. So in total it should be 2h. Are you okay with that? 2h. And you're thinking what? Why would you do that? Why would you make that complicated and have two H's rather than one? Hold with me, okay? Let's think about the rise. The rise. What's this top one going to be? F of what? S pl X plus H. What about the bottom one? F of X minus H. Do you see that? That's your starting point over there. There's your ending point, okay? 